Okay, welcome to today's morning session. Today's first speaker is Masaki Sasai of the University of Nagoya, Japan. And the title of his talk is Stochastic Dynamics of Transcription and Chromatin Movement. So please. Yeah, start. thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Sinha. And uh, uh, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers for giving me the uh, chance to talk here. So uh, uh, this is the content of my talk today. We have uh, 40 pages of slides in total. And the uh, uh, talk has four sections. We first begin uh, from the uh, introductory discussions on stochastic uh, gene expression. Then by using a simple theoretical model, we consider uh, the basic concepts of gene expression. In particular, uh, we introduce the concept of adiabaticity and uh, the method of landscape and flux analysis. And, and then, and then uh, we discuss the gene network of mouse embryonic stem cells. We introduce a model of gene network and discuss how adiabaticity or non-adiabaticity plays a role uh, to determine the dynamics of the gene regularity network. Uh, the model suggests that the dynamics of the network is uh, you know, uh, largely determined by how chromatin moves. So uh, then in the last section, we discuss chromatin dynamics by introducing the, uh, the recent single cell measurements. So uh, this is an uh, X-ray structure of uh, lambda repressor binding on DNA. And uh, these are the textbook illustrations. So when a uh, uh, repressor binds on the uh, promoter region of DNA, this binding blocks uh, RNA polymerase binding uh, to the promoter uh, locus. So that uh, you know, or represses the transcription or, or this turns off the gene activity here. But when the repressor unbinds from the promoter region, RNA polymerase can bind and the gene is turned on. And when activator binds or nearby the promoter site, it can recruit RNA polymerase uh, to promote, uh, uh, to enhance the gene activity. So all these regulatory proteins, repressors or activators, uh, you know, the important factors to regulate the uh, gene activity, uh, they are also uh, the products of the, uh, the gene uh, itself. So uh, the, uh, we can think about of the uh, communication am among the multiple genes like this. And uh, an important thing is that uh, uh, such regulatory network uh, is uh, very stochastic and noisy. This is because uh, cells are small or mesoscopic systems and the uh, copy number of uh, molecules inside cells are small. Particularly, uh, DNA is only one or a few copy uh, inside the cell. This is in sharp contrast uh, in the uh, macroscopic test tube experiment, there uh, we have the uh, you know uh, uh, molecules of the copy number of ten to the power of ten or more. So the row of large number holds here, but it does not hold uh, in these mesoscopic systems. So we can expect the large fluctuation in uh, biochemical reactions and particularly in the reactions for the gene uh, regulation. So this is an uh, uh, example uh, experiment. So uh, you know, much attention has been focused on the role of uh, noise or fluctuation in gene regulation. And here, uh, uh, this is the report of this group. Uh, a gene and the promoter are arranged in an artificial way in the plasmid DNA of, uh, of the bacterium. And that R gene is fused with a GFP gene. So the level of expression of that R protein can be monitored by the fluorescence intensity of GFP. And that R binds on the uh, that O promoter to suppress the expression of that R itself. So this is a negative feedback loop. 
Uh, but the fan, the second uh, 40 second tyrosine of TET R is replaced by alanine. Then the binding affinity of this mutant TET R to TET O becomes weak, so uh, the negative feedback loop is disrupted. And this is the reported uh, distribution of the number of cells showing certain fluorescence intensity, or uh, this is the distribution of the synthesis level of TET R. So, when uh, the negative feedback is lost, the distribution is uh, wide uh, with large fluctuation. But when the negative feedback is working, the distribution is narrow with smaller fluctuation. So, this is very reasonable. But the uh, uh, question is that uh, uh, is this uh, always uh, you know, happening? I mean, that uh, uh, the negative feedback loop always work in a different cell condition. So uh, to examine uh, this question, uh, probably that uh, we should uh, consider a theoretical model of gene expression. So uh, this is the uh, minimal model of uh, gene expression. Here, uh, the repressor protein works as a dimer. The dimer protein repressor binds on the prom promoter of its own. When the uh, repressor binds, the rate of protein synthesis, G0, is small. But when it unbinds from the promoter, the protein synthesis rate, G1, is large. And the synthesized protein is degraded with the uh, dilution rate constant, K. And the binding rate of the repressor is H, and unbinding rate is F. We should note H is a function of the protein concentration, X. Uh, that is, that H increases as X increases. And this simple model has two important parameters. One is, uh, here I wrote as uh, large X, is G over K. This is the uh, a typical uh, protein copy number synthesized. And the other is uh, omega. And uh, this is the ratio of the rate of the uh, DNA state change over the rate of the protein copy number change. And uh, this is uh, what we call uh, adiabaticity. And this word was borrowed from condensed matter physics. That means uh, a certain degree of freedom uh, in a condensed matter, like the electronic degree of freedom or spin degree of freedom, uh, may vary in a, a very uh, you know, short time scale, but uh, than the other atomic uh, degree of freedoms. So uh, the, the, uh, such a fast varying uh, degree of freedoms can be regarded as in uh, quasi equilibrium. So in this case, when omega is large, we can regard the, the uh, depressor binding status of DNA can be regarded as in a, a quasi equilibrium. So we will see how the system behavior changes when X or omega are buried. So by writing the uh, protein copy number as, as N, and uh, uh, X is uh, written like this. Omega is a system volume. And uh, uh, the, uh, this is the uh, master equation of this model. Uh, here, uh, P is a, a two-dimensional vector with the component P1 and P0. And uh, uh, P1 is a uh, probability that the uh, depressor is bound, uh, depressor is unbound and the protein copy number is n at time t, and p0 is the probability that the depressor is bound, and the protein copy number is n. And uh, uh, this <clears throat> master equation can be readily solved in the two limits. One limit is the adiabatic limit. Here, the, the repressor binding and unbinding is much faster than the protein copy number change. Then uh, transitions between zero and one uh, are very fast. So we can regard uh, them in a, a quasi-equilibrium. So we have uh, this expression, or we can write P1 and P0 like this. Then by writing in this way, the problem becomes one dimensional. So this is a diffusion 
along the space of n. So that can be uh, solved rather uh, easily. <clears throat> and the other limit is the non adiabatic limit. That is the small omega limit. When the transitions between zero and one are infrequent, the problem is decoupled to two one dimensional problems. Again, it is easy to solve these equations. These situations can be uh, illustrated like this. Uh, here, are the, uh, some printing is missing. I wrote uh, V equal minus log Px, so something weird on the screen. But anyway, this is uh, the V is the logarithm of P. Uh, when uh, in the uh, omega uh, is very small in the non adiabatic limit, the dis distribution of the copy number of the concentration of the synthesized protein X should be a Poissonian, or uh, Poissonian can be approximated by a Gaussian. Then V equal minus log P should uh, look like a parabola, like this for each. Uh, zero and one state. So uh, in this non adiabatic limit, the system diffuses over uh, each uh, landscape. We can call this landscape. This is the look like a uh, you know, free energy or you know, potential uh, energy uh, we, by using the analogy of the equilibrium statistical mechanics, but uh, uh, you know, we, we may call it landscape. So uh, <clears throat> the system diffuses over this parabola landscape and infrequently jumps among them. And uh, uh, in the adiabatic limit, on the other hand, two landscapes are uh, mixed due to the uh, frequent transitions between them and merged to one average landscape. Then the system dynamics is the diffusion uh, on the uh, merged landscape and in the present simple model, the merged landscape is one dimensional. And uh, because one dimensional force is always integrable, we can uh, really define the effective potential like this in this case. So of course the situation is, is more complex uh, in the middle regime between the two limits. The lifetime to stay in one landscape and the diffusion uh, over uh, each landscape should have a, a similar time scale. So oh, 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 we can see a, a rather complicated behavior, uh, which looks like eddy current or uh, eddy flux. So we should emphasize the two points to understand the stochastic dynamics of gene expression. We need to examine uh, single or multiple uh, surfaces or uh, landscapes depending on the adiabaticity and the trajectory or the, the probability flux diffusing over landscapes or the, uh, the probability to, to of transitions among the landscapes are important. So later we will see the dynamics from this picture of combined landscapes and flux in a more quantitative manner. But uh, before going to that, uh, we may show the results of the uh, Monte Carlo like calculation. I mean, that, that this is a GSP uh, calculation of the uh, single gene negative feedback model. Here, the product is the final factor uh, dispersion over the average of the uh, protein concentration. So, this is an index uh, to show the degree of uh, magnitude of fluctuation and plot it on the two dimensional space of log omega and log x. This is the adiabaticity and this is the uh, typical protein copy number. So we can see that when omega is larger than one in this area, in this regime, uh, the final factor uh, is less than one. So the fluctuation is small. So this is consistent with uh, what was observed as shown in the uh, previous uh, several slides ago, but it is interesting to see that uh, uh, the fluctuation is extremely large when omega is small in the non-adiabatic regime. 
And also that the anomaly can be found on the dynamical quantity like relaxation time. And uh, in the non adiabatic regime, uh, and the uh, protein copy number is small, uh, the relaxation time becomes extremely large. So, uh, and uh, these anomalies can be seen with a mean field like analysis. So, we may uh, introduce the variable theta to distinguish the two states. I mean that the probabilities to stay at the uh, repressor unbound state is cosine square uh, theta over two, and the probability to stay at the repressor bound state is sine square uh, theta over two. So theta is a vector angle variable to rotate uh, in the space of the uh, DNA state change. And uh, we have the uh, equations for the concentration and uh, theta. Here, the, uh, the parameters are normalized to show the simple appearance in the equations. And the, these differential equations can be derived by writing the, the master equation in the path integral form and taking the, the, uh, the largest uh, value uh, factor in the path integral representations. And uh, by taking the up to the uh, next order term, uh, in the passing integral uh, representation, we can have the Langevin equations like this. So that uh, we have the noise term here for theta and x. And the noise amplitude uh, is the scale like one omega, one over omega. So uh, the noise becomes uh, uh, small when the uh, system volume uh, is large. And uh, uh, this, this noise term becomes small when the adiabaticity is large. So uh, we can call this is the, uh, the large omega expansion and this is the small omega expansion. And uh, uh, this is the, uh, the uh, landscape and the flux uh, calculated from the, uh, those uh, Langevin equations. Here and blue and uh, red colors are the landscape calculated as uh, minus log p. Uh, p is the probability uh, calculated in the stationary state uh, of the large one dynamic solution. And white arrows are uh, the probability flux defined like this. This is the, the focal Planck equation corresponding to the Langevin equation. So uh, we can define the probability flux uh, circulating around the basin in the landscape. And uh, this axis is uh, guzai is cosine theta. So this xi equal one corresponds to the uh, repressor unbound state and uh, xi equal minus one is the repressor bound state. So when omega is large in the adiabatic case, the, uh, we do not have the uh, distinct feature of the circulating flux, but everything looks like one dimensional. I mean that uh, this black and blue arrows are the optimal path. So this is the largest path in the path integral. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, this is almost overlapped. Uh, the, you know, forward path and the backward path is all, almost overlapped. So everything looks like uh, one dimensional. So uh, we can use the analogy of the equilibrium statistical mechanics for this case. But when omega becomes smaller, we have the distinct circular flow. So all the things becomes uh, you know, non-equilibrium. So this can be uh, calculated by you know, some example quantities, uh, for example. With this, uh, we plot it the, the uh, the magnitude of the uh, flux, circular flux, and this is the uh, log omega. So when uh, going to the uh, non-adiabatic regime, uh, the flux intensity becomes stronger. And as flux becomes stronger, the final factor, uh, the magnitude of fluctuation becomes larger. And uh, this theta three is the uh, calculated from the uh, three time correlation function. So or this increase of delta C3 implies the uh, increase in time irreversibility. And the entropy production also increases as flux increases. So 
or non-equilibrium uh, dissipative features are enhanced as we go into the non-adiabatic regime. So uh, we saw that uh, uh, gene switching can be represented by landscapes and uh, uh, eddy flux or uh, circular flux. And as DNA state changes become slow in the non adiabatic regime, the non equilibrium dissipative features of the switches are enhanced and the fluctuations are increased. And uh, in the bacterial case, when we consider that uh, the uh, time scale uh, for the protein degradation would be similar to the time scale for the uh, necessary for cell fission, that should be a few 10 minutes. And uh, the binding and unbinding of the repressor should take place uh, in seconds. So uh, this implies the, the adiabaticity parameter omega uh, is uh, larger than one. So bacteria uh, in general is in the adiabatic regime. So this is consistent with the uh, photos observed in the, uh, in the experiment in bacteria. So the negative feedback loop works. But uh, we expect non-adiabaticity should be more important in higher organisms. So this is because in higher organisms, in eukaryotes, uh, we have the, the various a variety of uh, slow processes in gene expression. For example, that uh, gene expression is regulated by the histone state uh, modifications. So in eukaryotes, DNA wraps around the histone proteins and form uh, chromatin chains. And the histones can be chemically modified uh, in, in various ways. So in one modification that uh, uh, nucleosomes uh, should have the, some condensed structure uh, that inhibits uh, transcription. But when uh, in some modification pattern, uh, chromatin has an open structure, more open structure and the uh, transcription is enhanced. So uh, the histone state modification uh, is, uh, determines the uh, gene uh, expression activity and also that uh, uh, binding and binding of the specific transcription factor is important. And uh, sometimes uh, we may expect the bound uh, in transcription factor repressors or activators may recruit histone modifier enzymes. So that uh, changes the, the modification patterns of histone. So we can imagine the, some uh, feedback inside at each individual uh, gene locus uh, due to the interplay between the uh, transcription factor binding and the uh, histone modifications. But anyway, uh, this histone modification is a slow process. Each histone would be modified in a time scale of uh, you know, several tens minutes or so, but the, the many uh, nucleosomes may collectively modify it in the time scale of days or hours. So we can expect the, the non-adiabatic uh, effects of the histone modifications. So this can be seen by extending uh, the previous model of, of the landscape flux methods. So this is the plot on the two-dimensional space. This axis is the normalized protein concentration and this is the represents the histone state. Uh, this is the uh, activating histone, histone state and uh, this is the repressive histone state. So due to the, uh, the non-adiabatic dynamics of the histone state change, the, we have the distinct circular flow in this case. And this is the case for the self-activator case. And uh, uh, because of the positive feedback of the activator binding in this case, we have the two basins on the landscapes. So gene on state and gene off state. And we have the circular flux around like this. And for the repressor case, we have the uh, one uh, clear basin in the middle of the uh, on and off state. And again, we have the circulating flux around that. And uh, this flux implies some tendency that the histone state changes rather earlier than the protein concentration change. I mean, that the first histone may change and uh, 
protein concentration follows. And this implies that uh, the uh, important pathway should be different for uh, back, uh, forward and backward pathways would be different. So we have the hysteresis for uh, this gene switching. But this is the prediction of the, uh, this simple model. Okay, but uh, uh, we need to go uh, to the uh, more concrete biological problem. So let's consider the more biological systems. So this is the illustration of how uh, the mouse embryonic embryo uh, develops at the early stage. So after uh, the, uh, we have the fertilized egg, <clears throat> uh, so it's the cell uh, so, uh, you know, proliferate by the divisions. And after a few days, we have the inner cell mass. So this illustration uh, shows that uh, uh, this cluster of inner cell mass is, is uh, very heterogeneous. So various different types of cells coexist in this cluster. And from this inner cell mass, one cell may be picked up and uh, cultivated on a petri glass. Then that uh, when the uh, culture solution is suitably conditioned, uh, that cells can be proliferated uh, without <clears throat> uh, losing the uh, feature of the uh, undifferentiated uh, you know, uh, nature. And, you know, without differentiating, that, that cells can uh, the proliferate. So this is the embryonic stem cells. And uh, this <clears throat> feature is called pluripotent or pluripotency of the embryonic stem cells, uh, proliferating without differentiating. And uh, uh, th this is the uh, uh, sketch I uh, you know, copied from the, uh, these papers. Uh, in, the, in the original papers, they have, they show the beautiful photographs of the real uh, cultivated cells, but uh, I avoided to use that uh, to, uh, to avoid the copyright program because the, this program will be recorded and to be opened in uh, YouTube. So I replaced it with, by the, uh, this cartoon, but please look at the real photo uh, in these papers. But anyway, <clears throat> in this case, the, the NOG is co-expressed uh, with, uh, with GFP. And uh, uh, it is well known that uh, embryonic stem cells uh, the, uh, has three uh, important genes, NANOG, SOX2, uh, and, and, and OCT4, SOX3 and OCT4. These three genes are the important uh, genes to keep uh, prepotency of embryonic stem cells. And this shows that uh, uh, because NANOG is fused with, with the GFP, so the NOG expression is very heterogeneous in this population of the stem cells. So the question is how this fluctuation in the NOG expressions comes from. So one possible origin is that uh, this is because the, the input signal is enhanced. So in usual uh, the NOG, uh, the embryonic stem cell culture, uh, it, uh, the leukemia inhibitory factor, LIF protein is contained. And LIF is received by uh, stem cells and the uh, reception signal is transmitted to activate NANOG. So uh, if there are some fluctuations in this uh, reception process, then the NANOG expression uh, will be uh, fluctuating. This is one possible hypothesis. And another hypothesis is that uh, when NANOG uh, is uh, you know, self-activates itself, when NANOG protein is an activator of NANOG gene, then uh, we have this, uh, the positive feedback loop. So it has uh, on and off states. So the transition between these on and off states should look like uh, uh, this large fluctuation. So this uh, hypothesis was used in several authors. But uh, some uh, experimental reports says that uh, this is not the case. I mean that NANOG is a repressor of itself. So it constitutes the, the uh, negative feedback loop rather than positive feedback loop. And the <clears throat> other important 
uh, prepotency genes, SOX2 and OCT4, and NANOG, these three uh, the core genes of prepotency activate each other. But the uh, SOX2 and OCT4 does not show so much large uh, fluctuations. So OCT4 expression level is not so much different between the high nanog cell and the low nanog cell. So the question is why the nanog shows the large fluctuation uh, in the, uh, even in the case that SOX2 and OCT4 shows not so large fluctuations. So to consider this program, um, we uh, try to think about uh, gene uh, regulatory network model. So we <clears throat> considered various uh, the binding schemes by referring the experimental reports. So the SOX2 and OCT4 heterodimer would bind on the promoter of the OCT4 and SOX2 and NANOG and activate those genes. And the uh, OCT4 and NANOG dimer may bind OCT4 nearby the OCT4 locus and NANOG locus to activate these genes. So essentially that these three genes are activating each other. And we consider that uh, each gene, each of three genes have various processes of gene regulation. So we consider the three processes. One is the transcription factor binding and unbinding. So we consider the three transcription factors, SOX2, OCT4, and NANOG, that binds and unbinds at each gene locus. And the other things, is the uh, you know, formation and uh, uh, dissolution of the transcription complex. I mean, in, in eukaryotes, uh, the each gene is regulated by some uh, you know, complex, uh, protein complex of, uh, you know, to initiate the transcription. So when the, uh, some large scale complex is formed, this uh, uh, you know, formation and the dissolution of transcription complex would take some time. So we consider uh, this formation and uh, dissolution in a explicitly in the model. And uh, the last thing is the histone state modification. Histone may be switched between the activating state and repressing state. <clears throat> and we consider that, uh, that this rate uh, to, to turn off the histone state is enhanced when the uh, you know, uh, transition complex is not formed, but uh, this weight to turn on the uh, histone state is enhanced when the transition complex is formed. And we also assume that uh, uh, this uh, formation of the transition complex is enhanced when the histone state uh, is in uh, activating state. So we can uh, think of the positive feedback loop inside in each uh, uh, gene locus. And uh, we also assume that the uh, protein is synthesized only when the transcription complex is formed. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so we consider that, uh, uh, you know, our GSP algorithm simulation for this uh, uh, gene regulatory network. And here, we have the three parameters for adiabaticity for three processes. One is the adiabaticity parameter for the uh, transcription factor binding and unbinding. And the other is the uh, adiabaticity parameter for the uh, you know, conformation, uh, you know, chromatin conformation change or a complex formation or resolution. And the, the other is the uh, adiabatic parameter for the histone state modification. And uh, we may think that uh, the binding and unbinding of the transition factor would be a time scale of seconds or so. And uh, uh, protein copy number change would be hours uh, according to the uh, you know, um, observations of the how the nanog a copy number is changed in the embryonic stem cells. So this would be the guess from the experimental value. 
So we, we think that the, the uh, you know, adiabaticity of the TF binding and unbinding should be large. So this is in the adiabatic regime. And the histone state modification would take uh, days or so. So or this would be in the non adiabatic regime. But we don't, we don't know the time scale of the transition complex formation and the resolution. So uh, for the moment, we assume this is just in the uh, you know, middle of the, these uh, slow and fast processes. So transition complex formation would be around here. So this means this is mildly adiabatic. Then the, uh, this is the simulation results for the uh, nano copy number distribution. And this is the observed uh, nano expression level. And uh, this is the cell count. So the population of the embryonic stem cells, mouse embryonic stem cells has, uh, has a heterogeneous uh, two components. Uh, one is the low nano component, low nano cells, and the other is high nano cells so that the distribution of cells is clearly by model. But the simulated results is not like so. So something is wrong. Something in the, the, this model simulation would be uh, you know, uh, inconsistent to explain the observed clear by modality uh, of the uh, nano distribution. So uh, we consider that the, uh, uh, you know, uh, transition uh, complex formation would be a slow process. So this is rather hypothetical, but this I think that this could be possible because that uh, the uh, you know nano enhancer uh, should interact with many other uh, you know genes or uh, promoters. So uh, this is called the, the super enhancer. So the nano is regulated by its super enhancers. So this is a, 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 an illustration of how the super enhancer looks like. So the recent observation shows that the co-activators would form the, the uh, liquid droplet inside the nucleus and uh, the uh, RNA polymerase would bind on this uh, liquid droplet uh, by, by forming the the large uh, complex of the chromatin and uh, the necessary protein factors. So uh, when we consider that the nano super enhancer would be a, you know, particularly large in its scale, so that the, the time scale needed to form this super enhancer complex would be long. So we consider that this would be take rather in a time scale similar to the, uh, the uh, you know, cell cycle time scale. So, so we assume that in each cell cycle, this super enhancer would be formed or not formed. So with this, uh, you know, non-adiabatic um, nano uh, transition uh, complex formation, then we can uh, explain the uh, bimodal feature of the nano distribution. And we assume that the mildly adiabatic uh, transition complex formation for the other genes, they show the single modal distribution. So this would rather explain the experimental data. So uh, I think that uh, a lot should be uh, investigated on how the uh, nano super enhancer would be formed, which time scale do they have, that we need more examination. But uh, um, if we keep this hypothesis, we can further discuss about the differentiation process from this uh, embryonic stem cells. So uh, this is a, a differentiation process. So embryonic stem cells can be differentiated into epiblast and epiblast uh, should further differentiate into uh, germ cells or the uh, cells that constitute bodies. Or uh, when uh, the GATA6 the gene GATA6 is overexpressed or nano is suppressed, then uh, stem cells would proliferate and uh, differentiate into primitive endoderm cells. This is a part of the uh, you know, 
the outside cells from the body. And uh, when the gene CDX2 is overexpressed or octos uh, 4 is suppressed, then it uh, differentiates into trophic dumb cells, the other cells outside the uh, body itself. It's because that these differentiation processes are, are well examined in details. So we use uh, these two processes, two pathways to consider the differentiation process of embryonic stem cells. So we consider the network, including GALA6 and CDX2. And uh, these are the uh, networks we consider. So, uh, you know, OCTO4, SOX2, and NANOG uh, activate each other. So, uh, uh, you know, activation of these three genes represents the embryonic stem cell state. And when CDX2 is activated, it suppresses the, these uh, OCTO4 and SOX2 genes. So uh, this is trophic dumb cell. And when GALA6 is uh, activated, it suppresses CDX2 and other uh, these, these core genes. So this is a primitive endome cell. So this network has uh, three states, a primitive endome-like state and the trophic dome-like state and the stem cell-like state. So we performed the uh, GSP uh, simulations for, for this network. And uh, this is the trajectory for the uh, amount of six proteins in, in synthesized from these six genes. And this is uh, time steps. And uh, this is a plot of the uh, amount of the uh, three proteins, CDX2 and NANOG and OCT4 on this, uh, you know, uh, three dimensional space. And it is interesting to see that we have the, some uh, metastable states. So this is the high nanog state, and this is the low nanog states. And this is a state, uh, nanog and CDX2 is, are co-expressed. So that the trajectory uh, wandering around these three states in this case. So <clears throat> the system is rather confined in a stem cell state. Uh, this is somehow the, the intermediate state between the uh, uh, you know, CDX2 dominant state and the CD, uh, stem cell state. But uh, overall, the, this is, uh, does not escape from the stem cell state. And this is the other case that the system escapes from the stem cell state, which reaching to the uh, pre, uh, primitive uh, uh, trophic dump state in this case, the CDX2 dominant state. So uh, uh, there are a lot more uh, cell states. In this diagram, this is the uh, cell state SOX2 and OCT4 and high nano expressing state. And this is SOX2, SOX2 and OCT4 and low nano expressing state. And this is uh, low SOX2 and uh, CDX2 and uh, GCNF expressing state. So this is trophic term state. And this is GAL6 and uh, GCNF is are uh, expressing, and this is primitive endome state, and uh, this is the uh, intermediate state, and uh, this proves uh, the uh, stem cell-like state. So, uh, and uh, these uh, values are the uh, you know uh, probability of the transitions uh, between uh, these uh, cell states uh, measured by uh, running the many trajectories in this system. So we can. Uh, <clears throat> show this uh, with, in uh, the landscape picture. Uh, landscape can be calculated by the, uh, you know, calculated the transition rates between the cell states. So by fitting this transition rate with this uh, formula, we have the FIJ double dagger uh, and FI, like uh, this is an analogy of the equilibrium statistical mechanics. So F is an analogy of the free energy. So F is the uh, barrier height of the uh, transition state. And Fi and Fj is the uh, analogy of the free energy of the each cell state. But uh, uh, this, this uh, expression of the landscape uh, has uh, some trouble when the uh, transition has loops like this. So if we start from I state, we determine Fi and the barrier Fim and Fm. And uh, from this observation, we can define the Fjm and Fj. And, and from this, we can define Fij and Fi. But the uh, calculated Fi at the last step is different 
uh, in value from the uh, FI calculated in the beginning. So uh, this is, has the inconsistency. <clears throat> but uh, this inconsistency can be resolved when we consider the uh, contribution from the uh, circular flux like this. So we can uh, obtain the circular flux and the landscape by simultaneously solving these uh, equations. So this is the calculated landscape uh, for the differentiation. And this axis, dt and dpre, represents uh, the self state. Uh, you know, dpre uh, is the uh, uh, you know, degree how the self state is near to the primitive end dorm state. And L is the, uh, some uh, digitized expression level of each gene. So if CDX2 is highly expressed, the DTE is large. So this is the trophic term state. And when gather 6 is highly expressed, the DPR is large. So this is the uh, primitive end down state. And uh, this is the pluripotent stem cell state. So this shows that uh, uh, this has the stem cell basin. This has a somehow large basin. And this, we have the uh, intense circular flux. So, so this uh, corresponds to the large fluctuation of stem cells. But uh, fluctuating stem cells go down toward, toward along the, this valley and reaching to the uh, this primitive end down cells. And when uh, the octo four uh, is suppressed, the landscape is switched to this pathway so that the system reaches to the uh, trophic dam state in this case. The pathway is changed from, from this to this by the suppression of octo four. And these two panels, uh, below are uh, the case the uh, the uh, nanox switching is uh, should be assume, assumed as fast uh, we assume that the, uh, <clears throat> the formation rate of the transition complex for nanox is is rather fast then we have some uh, you know uh, rather uh, in shallow valleys in this case and the uh, fluctuation is strong along the valley and, but the, the fluctuation in the stem cell state becomes weaker. And uh, if the octo-4 is suppressed in this case, we have some, the, the, some confusing the mixing pathways between uh, two, two pathways toward the uh, two different, uh, you know, uh, uh, GALA-6 dominant pathway and CDX2 dominant pathway. So, I mean, that uh, with the uh, smaller fluctuation in the stem cell states, uh, the fluctuation in the differentiation routes is increased. But with the large uh, stem cell fluctuation, that the differentiation route is more, becomes more definite with the smaller fluctuation. So this is an interesting point in this uh, model calculations. So uh, this, this network model suggests the slow non adiabatic formation of the uh, end resolution transition complex of the nanog super enhancer induces the large fluctuation of uh, embryonic stem cells. And the combined landscape flux analysis reveals the relation between fluctuations and their differentiation. And uh, the large fluctuation of the st stem cells is necessary for the stable, definite pathway. And the slow non adiabatic formation and the resolution of the uh, transition complex is probably due to the large chromatin <clears throat> conformation change to form complex with a droplet of coactivators. But this, the last hypothesis, should be examined by comparing this experiment in a more quantitative manner. So we will go into the uh, observations of the chromatin dynamics in the next section. So chromatin uh, is a, an array of nucleosome with the DNA wraps around histone cores and to form the nucleosomes. And uh, our, uh, uh, we collaborate with the experimental group of Professor Maeshima at National Institute of Genetics at Mishima in Japan. And they observed uh, the movement of the single nucleosomes in a genome-wide manner in living human cells. Uh, this is the experimental setup uh, of their observations. So uh, the, the laser uh, uh, illumination was you know, uh, coming from the bottom of the slide glass with a slant angle. And uh, uh, due to this angle, that only some uh, thin layer was illuminated in living cells. And the uh, uh, nucleosome protein, uh, H2B histone, 
was fused with halo protein, and halo can bind uh, the fluorescent dye TMR. And when the concentration of TMR is dilute, only some uh, minor portion of nucleosomes bind TMR. So only a few numbers of nucleosomes uh, have fluorescent. Uh, fluorescence uh, is uh, illuminations. I mean that if uh, every nucleosome uh, are, is illuminated, uh, you know, or show the fluorescence uh, intensity, then it, it is too bright to distinguish individual nucleosome. So only the selected, occasionally, probabilistically selected nucleosomes uh, randomly, you know, uh, show the frustration, uh, fluorescence like this. So the, each bright dot represents the, the nucleosome, single nucleosome. And the uh, motion of this uh, nucleosome can be monitored uh, to, to give uh, this type of uh, movement trajectory. This is a trajectory for a few seconds of uh, three nucleosomes in this case. And uh, <clears throat> this, this trajectories can be uh, quantified. Uh, this is the uh, movie of the observed uh, nucleosome motions. So we can see that uh, uh, the human uh, cr uh, chromosomes, uh, you know, chromatin is highly dynamic. It is not like a rigid crystalline packing, but it is, uh, you know, uh, move in a, in a very flexible way. So these motion can be quantified by measuring the mean square displacement recorded by each trajectory. So this, this red uh, histogram is the observed mean square uh, displacement each uh, nucleosome trajectory shows for during the 0 0.5 sec uh, second. But uh, this, this looks too noisy, but uh, this, this noise can be filtered out by using the, uh, the some statistical method based on the Bayesian statistical theory. <clears throat> this is that we first defined the Fanhoff self-correlation function uh, defined like this. This is the observed displacement. And this DGS can be represented by the superposition of the uh, Gaussian with the mean square displacements like this. And PM <clears throat> can be obtained by solving this equation in a self-consistent way. So this black line is the obtained PM, the distribution of the mean square displacement. And this shows clearly that the, uh, the bimodal feature, so uh, that uh, in general, the human genome has two components, the, uh, the uh, you know, slow uh, chromatin part and the fast chromatin part. Uh, this is the superposition of the <clears throat> distribution over 10 different cells. Uh, you know, this is a single cell uh, data. And this is the log log plot for the mean square displacement. And this is the, uh, the fast component. This is a slow component. Uh, dashed lines are the 10 individual cells and the real lines are the <clears throat> average over 10 cells. And uh, this shows the both fast and the slow nucleosomes show the uh, you know, uh, sub-diffusive motion, but the, the exponent of the uh, uh, fast moving chromosome should be uh, larger, a bit larger than the slow uh, moving chromosomes. And uh, <clears throat> it is interesting that uh, we may look at the, the behavior. Uh, this is the, the control user cells. And this is the, the observation when the alpha amanitin was added to cells. And this alpha amanitin uh, suppresses the, uh, the activity of the RNA polymers. So trans transcription is suppressed in these cells. And it is interesting to see that the uh, nucleosome motion is enhanced by the suppression of transcription. This was rather un unexpected in a common sense that the transcription uh, is, is received by the more uh, open chromatin chain so that the, when the transcription activity is enhanced, then that the chromatin motion should be enhanced. And uh, when the transcription is suppressed, 
then the chromatic motion should be suppressed. But uh, of that things is, is opposite. When the uh, transition is suppressed, chromatic motion is enhanced. And uh, this is the, the quantification. So this is the distribution of the mean square displacement for during the 0 0.5 second uh, for the control cell. And uh, this is the uh, cells treated with alpha mitin. So both the fast and the slow component uh, is shifted toward the large MS, uh, mean square displacement side. So the chromatic motion is uh, so much enhanced in this case. So probably that the, these, these, uh, the slowest peak is the uh, chromatins anchored to somewhere, probably that the het heterochromatin uh, part uh, tethered to the uh, nuclear uh, membrane or something like that. But this, uh, this shows some constraint to the chromatin motion is loosened. So the possible origin may be like this. So uh, we saw that the, the nano Super enhancers are, uh, uh, you know, form the uh, droplet of the core act activator, and the uh, promoters of nanox and the relevant genes are, uh, you know, weakly bind on uh, on these uh, core activator droplets, and th those would be uh, rather ubiquitous in the uh, human cells. There, there are the many uh, super enhancers there, uh, so. <clears throat> Uh, those uh, you know co uh, droplet of co-activators may work as hub that te weakly tethered uh, chromatin ch chains. So that constrain the chromatin motions, and when so uh, the RNA polymerase action was inhibit inhibited, this binding, this constraint would become weaker. So chromatin chain would become free from this this hub constraint and moves in a more uh, enhanced way. Uh, so this is a hypothesis. And this can be represented by uh, this uh, the polymer model simulation. Here the green squares represents uh, a domain of the 100 kilobase chromatin domain. And we assume the chromatin domain is connected by springs. In, in this uh, uh, you know, animation, the springs are not shown uh, for the visibility and uh, the red sphere uh, represents uh, the chromatin domains uh, that binds RNA polymerase, and uh, uh, this gray sphere uh, represents the, the droplets, liquid droplet of the coactivator. And in, in this case, uh, the, uh, all the RNA polymerase uh, becomes inactivated. And uh, When the RNA polymerase is activated, it weakly binds on the, uh, this gray sphere. So this, uh, you know, uh, this end glue is the number of activated uh, RNA polymerase. So that the uh, number, of, if the number of red squares increases, uh, mean square displacement is decreased in this simulation. So this is the distribution of the mean square displacement. So it shifts it uh, by the suppression of the RNA polymerase uh, uh, activity. So, but it is uh, still uh, at the, the hypothetical stage, but the, the, I believe the combination of the, uh, this uh, statistical analysis and uh, polymer model simulations of chromatin motions and uh, uh, the structure model for the genome and the single nucleosome observations of the living cells, uh, those combined analysis would reveal how the uh, chromatin dynamics uh, regulates the transcription dynamics and uh, Further, the uh, transition dynamics of the gene regulatory dynamics. And the last slide is most important. So, this is acknowledgement. This is uh, Professor Kazuro Maeshima at the uh, National Institute. This is a, a view of the Mount Fuji from the Mishima city. And this is Dr. Uh, Ashwin. And uh, <clears throat> he uh, contributes in the many works uh, that I talked today uh, for the statistical analysis of chromatin dynamics. and. Uh, uh, and the landscape theory for the um, iPS cells and uh, embryonic stem cells. And uh, this is the last slide. And so thank you very much. Thank you, Masaki Sasai, for a very nice talk. And uh, now the floor is open for discussions and questions and comments.
Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, Masaki, when you said that uh, RNA polymerase uh, kinetics gets affected, does it mean that the, the transcription complex just falls off or what does it do? So uh, our assumption is that the uh, uh, you know, uh, interaction between the co-activator droplet and RNA polymerase would become weak so that uh, the RNA polymerase will become detached from the uh, co-activators. But the, the, the dynamics or the distribution or the structure of the co-activator uh, droplets are also affected by the, this binding so that uh, I probably guess that the distribution of the uh, co-activator droplets would be modified by the RNA polymerase suppression. So that would be an interesting point. Uh, the, the polymer simulation shows that uh, the movement of the co-activator droplets is are also affected by the interaction between the RNA polymerase and the droplets. So that means the error rates, if I say, uh, you know, premature detachment as an error, so error mm -hmm. rate will keep increasing with that, right? Right, right, right. <clears throat> I think so that uh, it, it should increase the, the fluctuation, I guess. Because one thing that I could not find, so in most of the simulations, do you assume that when you say transcription, uh, do you assume that this is error-free transcription? Because you know there are two things, speed versus accuracy that often people look at, but that mm -hmm. is an average speed of transcription versus accuracy. But here, uh, that accuracy part was not looked at, right? Most of the time. That's right, that's an interesting part. So uh, in a transition complex, RNA polymerase uh, must be suitably phosphorylated and to, to initiate the transcription. This would be the, the regulation the, to switch, off, switch on the transcription. And uh, this accuracy must be regulated by the, the reactions in the droplet or the structure in the droplet. So that's an interesting point, right? I think that uh, uh, we need to consider the balance between the free energy consumption and the time scales and the accuracy. Yeah, and, I, I agree that. Right. Uh, another question I have uh, is that when you say that it is, uh, you know, equilibrium like landscape that you construct with mm -hmm. something which is like free energy. So uh, there, when you uh, look at the problem, is it a non-equilibrium steady state or you don't even have non-equilibrium steady state in the problem? That is the non-equilibrium steady state. Equilibrium is just an analogy. Of yeah. The so, so it, yeah, so I understand. So it, it is still a steady state. It is not a, a transient state, right? If you're looking at it from that perspective. Right, right, right. But the, the, the transient state can be uh, regarded, I mean, uh, you know, uh, the, the landscape uh, should be a basis for understanding the, uh, you know, uh, transition processes in the, uh, you know, no equilibrium dynamic processes. Okay. okay, thank you. Oh, I have a question, can I ask? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, so when you say fast moving and slow moving, like, so this is the exponent of like diffusion, like, I mean, you plot X square versus T and the exponent the alpha or whatever, is that what you call fast? Can you explain what is fast moving and slow moving once more? Ah, for the, the uh, observed- The last part. Yeah, the yeah. last part. So I... So, you mean... So this, this graph, you mean? No? Yeah, yeah. So, so th this this red histogram is the observed histogram for the uh, mean square displacement, and this blue uh, black line is the uh, you know uh, after the statistical treatment, and we can define the the, the you know small mean square displacement component and far, uh, large mean square displacement component, and we can label each nucleosome by following this classification. 
so so we can label you know we know the each trajectory or the observed trajectory so we can label each trajectory whether it is it belongs to the fast component or the slow component then by gathering the <clears throat> fast component we can plot like this and this is the uh, the nucleosome from the slow component And, uh, so the x-axis in the top graph, uh, right, top right-hand side graph, m is what? Uh, this, this, this uh, mean is, square uh, displacement, right? Yes, right. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay. Hi, so this is Shaun here. I have a, a follow-up question to this. Um, yes. Yeah. So uh, after the treatment, when the um, the polymerase is deactivated, um, mm -hmm. do you see a shift? To the uh, to uh, of both these peaks, or is one of these peaks maintained and the other shifted? Yeah, actually, that uh, that we have the shift in both two peaks. I mean that uh, if we decompose this, but but some part remains here. But some parts mm -hmm. shift toward the the, uh, the faster side. Mm. This this becomes very much fast. Mm -hmm. A few times faster. So, so is it, is it yeah. right to say that originally those two peaks would correspond to heterochromatin and euchromatin, um, or is there something more subtle to that? I think that uh, uh, things are uh, rather mixed. I mean that uh, for the if we plot for the uh, the shorter time scale with uh, 0 0.05 seconds or something like that, mm -hmm. we still have two peaks. Then that it, for the short time scale motion depends on whether it is uh, heterochromatin-like or uh, the uh, euchromatin-like because the short time scale motion uh, would, would be affected by the local structural uh, environment around the nucleosome. Mm -hmm. but, but for the, the longer time scale, it may, you know, uh, be affected by how the loop structure uh, is, uh, or that the loop is exposed out of the chromatin domain, or the confined inside the chromatin domain. Such, such, uh, you know, heterogeneous uh, chromatin domain structure would be important, I, I guess. I see. And when you say long time scale, how long are you say thinking? Uh, still, that we have just just a. Uh, uh, few seconds or something like that. Oh, this, yes. this is because that the long illumination of the, the laser, uh, you know, uh, tends to kill the, the cells. Absolutely, right, right, I see. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that with the, the further uh, longer time scale that we may have the effects of the nucleus diffusion. I mean that the, the fluid mechanical like uh, motion of the uh, long wavelengths uh, chromatin motion would be observed uh, as reported in by the other groups. So, so something uh, before that that we may have the, the intermediate scale motion or like uh, chromatin domain motion, I guess. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Can I ask one more question? Sure, sure. So, is it possible to do the experiment by depleting ATP supply because the nucleosome motion uh, mm -hmm. may be, uh, you know, because of sliding or something, which mm -hmm. would require probably ATP, mm -hmm. uh, chromatin remodeling enzyme or something. So if you suppress ATP supply, mm -hmm. uh, can, can that uh, be sort of controlled? Right, right. And, and uh, uh, it, it is interesting that uh, many things have been argued, uh, particularly that uh, the uh, nucleosome uh, replacement should be uh, the, uh, should happen uh, by consuming ATP, but uh, <clears throat> ATP depletion have many many uh, side effects. I mean, for example, that uh, the uh, ion concentration inside the nucleus is changed. Be no. That is because the the uh, ion uh, transportation uh, toward the uh, nucleus is changed. Yeah. So that that uh, changes the overall structure of the chromosome. So so this would cause the many side effects actually. That so it is difficult. Uh, so ATP suppression is is doable, but the the, uh, uh, the results it is would be difficult to analyze the results. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
So just in the context of Devashish's question, I have a related question. So you know this uh, Zidovska experiment where they try to do measure the dynamics inside the nucleus. Are you, you do you know this? Uh, I have, my question is in the context of that Zidovska, those similar experiments. How do you how you are study your results? How do how, how does it compare with Zidovska at all results? Do you have a comment on that? Oh, for, for, for zero scar. Okay, so there is okay. Maybe uh, there's a set of papers by Zidovska, and the, is she's the first author. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, that, that that is a modeling for the the genome, is it? No, they see ATP dependent movement. Ah, of, I see. I see. Uh, things inside the nucleus, uh -huh. and they argue that there is some uh, motor or something. So I I haven't understood that paper very well, but. That's why my question is in the context of your work. It seems to be in a similar background where you look at the motion of things inside the nucleus mm -hmm. and you see different types of motion. Right. And I was wondering, do you have any comment on comparing these two work? Uh, so, so I'm sorry that uh, I, I'm not familiar with, with that. Fine, fine. <laughs> Yeah, 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 but uh, there are many uh, variety of different, uh, you know, microscopic observations on the, the chromatin movement. So uh, this particular data uh, is that uh, we can use the, the single nucleosome data. So that that's, I mean, uh, would be useful for the comparisons with the polymer models. So that's that's what I, uh, you know, uh, doing in this line. Yeah, I, I, another question, sorry. See, related to, you know, this. See, what is surprising to me is that when mm -hmm. you say that the, you know, uh, dynamics is increased, uh, and it, something counterintuitive. So mm -hmm. energetically, it, it seems to me, uh, you know, very uh, sort of, you know, not a good thing for a cell because ultimately if the nucleosome has to move, mm -hmm. so, you know, it has to break many base pairs and then form again. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is energetically huge cost. So right. enhanced, enhanced movement would be energetically huge cost. So mm -hmm. just to suppress uh, transcription, uh, mm -hmm. it will have to pay a large energy cost. So evolutionary, why should cell choose to do that? Why cells uh, used to uh, con must consume free energy to for the transcription is the question. No. Because see, you said wait, the transcription is suppressed. Mm -hmm. uh, you you find that you know that there is a lot of uh, movement of the nucleosome, right? If right, I right, 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 enhanced, right. But not a lot of movement of the nucleosome would require that there is an energy cost for ah, that. Ah, I see, I see, I see. <clears throat> so I mean that the the, uh, the, in the as a basic line, nucleosomes are highly you know mobile. I mean, it it shows the large uh, you know liquid-like fluctuation. So it, it is uh, due to the uh, you know thermal motion or the the effective thermal motion uh, you know activated by the many reactions inside the nucleus and uh, uh, those those uh, you know fluctuating thermal like you know including the activating force motions are tethered to the various structures inside the nucleus for for their functions. So, so that the, the regulation of those constraints changes the, the degree of motions. So, so that the basic you know, uh, driving force of the fluctuating motion should be the many other reactions and also the, uh, just the summer um, fluctuations. So, the, the, so those, those added factors, uh, you know, activating the action effects and the summer motion, uh, you know, almost always uh, in agitate and enhance the uh, nucleosome motion, but it was uh, suppressed by some uh, you know, structures inside the nucleus for their functioning. So that the regulation of the functions or suppression of functions changes the, the so dynamical patterns or motions of the nucleosomes. So that, that is our view, present view. Okay, thank you. Some more questions. Uh, I have a comment about the use of the term adiabatic because mm -hmm. 
in the context of physics, we usually associate adiabaticity with slow processes. Here, it's the right, right. definition is opposite. Ah, right, right. So it's a relative slow and fast, right? That's right. Yeah. So it's uh, just a uh, tradition in the, the field of the uh, gene expression dynamics. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Okay. <clears throat> Are there any more questions or comments? Because there's still time for discussion. So I think that the, the activating reactions are, are important, but uh, our assumption, our present working hypothesis is that so, such ATP consumption does not directly you know, activate the motions uh, you know, or a bit far from, you know, uh, for example, micrometer distant traces are not directly activated by uh, the reactions, but uh, uh, so, so that the dissipated dissipating free energy, you know, is, is rap rapidly uh, activating the, the entire nucleus in, in the time scale of the seconds or something like that. So oh, this is our present uh, view. I mean that for the nanometer scale, such direct interaction by the ATP consumption and the nearby motion, uh, you know, uh, effect is important, but if we, think about the, the position uh, distance in the micrometer scale so that the, the, uh, the basic fluctuating environment is, is rather near uh, to you know, describe the, the situation in the uh, chromatin motion is, is, is that working hypothesis we have that present. Okay. So uh, if there are no more questions, shall we move to the next speaker. I would request that we start uh, exactly at announced hour. Uh, okay. Because somebody wanted specific yeah, that, that, that. That, that, That's what I also felt. We can have short break and then we start exactly at, at the 9.30. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, then we'll do that. We'll take a short okay. break. We'll reassemble at 9.30. Okay, thanks. Masaki, thank, thank you very much. very much for a very nice talk. Enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah, it is a very- The audience uh, must enjoy the talk, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>